Uh, yes, it's uh, Staff Sergeant Martin Christopher, M-A-R-T-I-N, C-H-R-I-S-T-O-P-H-E-R. I am a 37 Fox. I'm with the uh, 303rd Tactical PSYOP Company. Uh, we are stationed out of Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania, and I'm also a resident of Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania. Uh, well, prior to mission, it's a, it's a lot of prep. It's a lot of um, pouring through annexes and previous in, uh, interactions with the town folks and you know the, the role players on the sticks lane. So going over notes, uh, making sure we have all the information correct and straight and coming up with a game plan, uh, some talking points, face-to-face uh, -face outlines, things like that. Um, for today's prep, it was mostly coming up with post-question uh, testing or post-testing questions and just kind of getting the team on the same page so when we get here on site, everybody knows their job and everybody knows what to do. Well, obviously you always prepare for the best, um, but plan for the worst. Um, so you kind of uh, just got to roll with each conversation as it goes and let it un um, unfold and develop on its own naturally. Um, when you hit a roadblock, you kind of kind of take a step back, think for a second, maybe pause and think of a way that you can maybe divert the roadblock, get back on track on the conversation and be able to uh, keep moving forward to get the information that you need. What, so what is the ultimate goal of this mission? Is it to get the civilians on the side of the U.S. Army? Or what exactly is uh, so so what, what's the win? Uh, our, our, our win here is to have pro-coalition sentiment within the town, providing strength and unity uh, for the uh, government of uh, Bolivia. Uh, definitely, you know, PCCs, PCIs are conducted daily. Uh, sensitive items inventories is uh, conducted prior to, during, and after movement. Um, just pretty much... Uh, making sure that all the information that we've gathered from pre previous iterations on the lanes is utilized moving forward with each, um, as the scenario develops and grows. Uh, it's just one of those where it's constantly involving situation and environment, so it stays fluid and we have to stay fluid ourselves. Uh, I, I like the realism of it. Uh, when you have role players in situations like this, uh, especially some of the folks that you're not usually used to working with, it adds that level of realism to it. Uh, so it's not, you know, the soldiers that you're used to drooling with and it, it just gives you that level of unknown. So you are actually building rapport with that person instead of, hey, I've already had this rapport built because I know this person from back home station. So, um, and definitely situation lanes like this is definitely a good practice scenario for, for PSYOP, you know, to get out and actually get those face-to-face -face interactions and sometimes get those tough questions and those, you know, curveballs that get thrown at you during the lane. So it gets you to think on your feet and, and react accordingly in the situation. Uh, definitely that, uh, you know, that we operate in a fluid di uh, environment and to always be fluid with it. Um, as soon as you stay fast and stand fast on an idea, you're, it's just like a rock in a creek. You're just going to, the water's going to flow past you and you're going to miss it. So you got to move with it. I chose PSYOP. I was an uh, active duty combat engineer for about eight, oh, well, actually going on 12 years before I reclassed to PSYOP. Um, I, I like the the independence of it, the idea of you're kind of operating in between two channel, you know, chains of command and you have freedom uh, of mission and you know how to execute that mission, more so than the, the very rigid structure of combat arms where this is your mission, this is your, you know, your mission set times and everything. So here it's a lot more um, responsibility falls on you, especially as a team leader or team chief to execute planning, training, injecting yourself into that uh, MMDP and actually being a uh, part of that decision-making process uh, just really kind of attracted me to the MOS. Uh, definitely someone who's comfortable talking. Uh, a, a level of confidence definitely is uh, a plus in this MOS, uh, but that's something that could also be taught and learned throughout uh, exercises like this and just constant uh, practice and, and, and getting out to the field and honing those skills and those uh, PSYOP uh, relevant um, skills and just, you know, all, all, all around really, it's just, um, it's an MOS that takes some time to getting used to and um, it definitely is, it, it, from my perspective, it, 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 I've seen growth just from the few short times on my soldiers out here today, um, leading up to today and, you know, prior to, um, and it, it just, the more you do it, the better you get at it. I would say definitely the, the, the freedom of mission and, and, and the responsibility that comes along with it. Uh, some people might find that to be a, a negative, but I, I think it really got, comes down to being a positive thing because it really teaches you to think not just maybe one or two ranks above you, but really big picture. And um, I know coming from combat arms, you know, you, you see little picture, you know, you're just told to, hey, this is your mission, go execute, and not really seeing the bigger picture behind the, the you know, the why. So in this, in this MOS, you definitely 
definitely get to know the why and then some. So I would say that's probably the, you know, the number one selling point.